Welcome back. It's still the breakfast on Plus TV Africa. We're set for a major, a first major conversation. Um, you might already know that Justice uh, Eleoje Enenche of a uh, high court in the federal capital territory, Abuja, uh, yesterday, Monday, restrained the federal government of Nigeria and 27 listed commercial banks uh, from suspending, stopping or extending or interfering with the currency redesign terminal date of February 10, uh, 2023 or issuing any directive contrary to that date. Also restrained were the President, President uh, Muhammad Buhari uh, and of course Central Bank of Nigeria and the Governor of the Central Bank of Nigeria, Gordon Mayfield, uh, in a motion ex parte filed by five of 18 political parties. Justice and NHA also granted an order directing the chief executive officers of the commercial banks in India alter egos to show cause why they should not be arrested and prosecuted for the economic and financial sabotage of the country by holding, withholding and not paying or dispersing the new 200, 500 and 1,000 Naira banknotes despite supply of such notes by the Central Bank of Nigeria. Um, on Monday, no fewer than 14 out of the 18 registered political parties uh, participating in the 2023 general election under the aegis of Forum of Chairman of Nigerian political parties and forum of candidates for the 2023 general election threatened to withdraw all participation uh, from the exercise if the federal government and the Central Bank of Nigeria succumb to pressure, as they put it, or cancel or suspend the cash withdrawal limit and Naira redesign deadline. All right, and uh, we're asking what this means for the forthcoming elections because the political parties have gotten involved in this. Here to provide analysis of this, we have a uh, human rights lawyer, a uh, human rights advocate, barrister, uh, Justice Uwebu. Uh, Justice, good morning to you. Thank you very much for your time. Good morning. All right. In these uh, times, uh, in these times when, you know, the role of the judiciary in, in elections are, are concerned and in, in other aspects of national life, um, uh, what are your thoughts on this ruling by the Abuja High Court? led by Milord Rambo Justice and Nche, uh, which is barring uh, the aforementioned parties from uh, tampering with the Naira redesign policy or the cash withdrawal limit policy. It means they can't extend the deadline. And it's even um, threatened uh, more action uh, against the CEOs of banks. What, what are your thoughts on this, this court uh, decision? Well, as far as I'm concerned, um, I don't think there's anything um uh, somehow concerning political parties with the bank policy or with the CBM policy as it is. All right, I, I guess seems to have been uh, interrupted, taken away by a uh, network challenge. Um, Justice Uwebu, can you hear us, please? Yes, I can hear you. Uh. All right. Yeah, please go on. All right, it happens from time to time. Um, network is always a challenge in this part of the world. Mercy. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, but, um, you know, we, we're looking at, uh, we, we actually work towards talking about this threat by the political parties. Only to hear last night that, of course, the, uh, the court had ruled barring the president, barring the Independent National Electoral Commission and all these other uh, uh, parties from tempering with the deadline. Um, it's, these are interesting times. You know, you know, some people will say, oh, the courts are there uh, for the common man, for the masses. The political divide has, has brought itself into this Naira debate. It's now becoming clearer that there is a political leaning affiliation set of political parties or group that wants the deadline to be shifted and are saying crime blue murder over this Naira policy and the scarcity of the Naira and even the fuel scarcity. And you have a certain group of uh, politicians and their followers, their supporters, who are saying, yes, Emifile is doing well, he must not touch this deadline. Some things are play here, it's getting clearer every day. But we, we, I'm told we have a guest back, uh, Justice Uwebu, human rights advocate. Can you hear me, please? Yes, I can hear you. All right, please go on, sir. So what I'm trying to say is that, um, as far as I'm concerned, it is purely uh, CBM policy. And uh, one way or the other... Oh, we, we might have to get back to Justice Uwebu. Uh, Mercy, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's uh, like I said, that the political divide is being seen in this, but parties threatening not to be part of the 2023 elections. Why do you think, you know, political parties would go as far as that? Because you spent money 
to prepare for an election. You, you, you spend money campaigning, and then you say, oh, we won't be participate in the election because a, a narrow deadline is extended. So, so I think that uh, a lot of people have been very excited about the Electoral Act 2022 and uh, the kudos been given to President Muhammad Buhari for you know, the signage and passing of it. Uh, people are quite excited. And they feel that, hey, this is the best thing that has happened to our democracy uh, over, over the years. But you know how it is. Uh, we live in a complex society, uh, simple to complex, and things are getting very complex. But if you look at the Electoral Act, and if you look at some of the sections of it, uh, for instance, let's even look at uh, you know, section 29 of the Electoral Act 2022. It says that every political party shall not later than 180 days before the date appointed for a general election under this act submit to the constitution in, in prescribed forms the list of candidates the proposed uh, party proposes to sponsor at the election who must have emerged from valid primaries. 31 would say that a candidate may withdraw his or a candidate or by notice and writing signed by him and delivered personally by the candidate to the political party that nominated him for elections and uh, you know political party shall convince such withdrawal to the commission not later than 90 days before it 31 uh, subsection one also said the commission shall at least 150 days before the day of the election publish by displaying or cursing to be displayed are the relevant of office of the commission on the commission's website the statement of full names and address of all candidates standing nomination I, I like to go through 31 again of the Electoral Act. It says the political party shall not be allowed to change or substitute its candidate whose name has been submitted under Section 29 of this Act, except in the case of death or withdrawal of a candidate. I mean, I'm just saying that if you look at it, it probably might not speak to the fact that the political party itself, because it's not a case of individual withdrawing from the race, but it's a case of the political parties themselves saying we cannot be part of you know this race. Now, my question would be, uh, I, I think that we'll yeah, be. Yeah, we, we have Justice Uwe back. back. Uh, uh, Justice, can you hear us, please? Yes, I can hear you. Okay, okay, please go on. You were making a point because we're asking you for your thoughts on uh, uh, what, yes, how the court has uh, waited uh, in. Uh, like I said before, my thought is that although the political parties um, seem it wise or deem it fit to uh, somehow go to court, but for me, it's purely an administrative issue that the CBN have to weld it because it is the, the right and powers of the CBN to make policies that will govern the financial institutions and financial stability of the country. So I think some of these things, to me, I see them as policies for me, as far as I'm concerned. So I and Kofi were having this conversation during that break, and I'd like to ask you now, if you look at the Electoral Act of, for 2022, do you think it makes provision for the withdrawal of a political party? We're not talking about a candidate now. I mean, a political party withdrawing from the race. Well, you cannot force anybody or political party to either continue an election or withdraw. It is, a, it is an individual thing, it's a personal thing. And remember that the moment your political party is formed, it assumes the position of a legal entity. So if somebody says, I don't want to be part of this process again, what are you going to say? So there's no, for me, there's nothing wrong in that. So once a political party on its own has decided that they don't want to be part of uh, a process, uh, they can withdraw, but that does not mean it will stop the process from going. No, I, 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 I mean, um, Justice Uwebo, we're saying that over time, we've not had enough laws, uh, you know, to govern the electoral process. And here we have the 2022 Electoral Act, and a lot of persons have expressed confidence that this will help us. So I'm saying that let's juxtapose, let's compare this with the content of the Electoral Act. It makes provision for candidates who wants to withdraw from the race and what have you, individuals now, submitting to the party. But there's no provision in the Electoral Act stating where, you know, I mean, I haven't seen it, so except you have, saying that a party itself, we're not saying the individual, can say we no longer want to become part of this because, I mean, there, there are reasons where you can say you don't want to be uh, a part of the system, okay? For a candidate, I mean, in the case of death or whatever cases, which there's also provision for a fresh election to be conducted. So I'm saying outright withdrawal. Does the Electoral Act of 2022 capture that? 
No, the truth is that uh, it's, it's nowhere captured. But what I'm trying to say, that's the point I was trying to make, that in as well, whether it was captured or not becomes a material. Because you cannot force a, a political party to be part of a process. In as much as it is not simplicity that stated and in the electoral act. But I still believe that political parties and individuals still have the right to do whatever they want to do. Like I said before, it does not stop the process of the election. So it's either you want to garbage in or you want to garbage out. For me, I don't see any issue on that. Because if you remember, this is not the first time a political party will want to withdraw from an election. It's an exercise. And if you don't want to be part of the exercise, so be it, as far as I'm concerned. No, 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 but if you say that there's nothing wrong, just like Kofi had mentioned, I mean, the, the umpire who saddled with the responsibility of conducting an election have gone out to print. I mean, funds, budget has been released. People, I mean, the budget has been released based on the number of parties that will be participating. And so materials would have been printed. Are, are we still saying now, morally, it doesn't not make any sense. It doesn't matter. It can we say that a political party can wake up a few weeks to the election to say they don't want to be part of it? And that's not a problem. Fact, After, fact, you know, the government has expended and budgeted for it. In fact, that is where this issue of amendments will come up. You see, remember, uh, uh, Professor Lucille said that the law is to harmonize with the society. So as things go on every day and things happening, you begin to discover some lacunas and some loopholes. For me, I would also suggest that in an issue like this, if the electoral act as it is now will not be the best and is also subject to amendment. Maybe after this election, we'll look at it also again holistically. I agree with you that if, if a political party you know, withdraws from an election, almost at the verge, where election is to be held, maybe one week or two weeks before the election, and IDEC has prepared, and they have spent money and all the rest. It is our money. It is the Nigerian money. And a political party just have to say is withdrawing. I would say that that section of the amendment, or it should be enshrined in the electoral act, that any party that withdraws within a particular frame of time should be meant to pay a certain amount to INEC or to the federal government. All right. Uh, are you are you um, you know saying that the judiciary should have um, uh, you know declined any any judgment or ruling on this this matter to say okay these uh, bodies mentioned it better either the uh, commercial banks or the the central bank are statutorily empowered to take decisions for the benefit of the economy and therefore they would just say uh, um, you know recuse recuse themselves from from making such uh, any pronouncement regarding it. Uh, some people have talked about something like this when it comes to the issue of political parties and their internal arrangements. So you leave the political parties to decide how they want to run. Don't make decisions for them. Um, so do you think the, the, the court should have recused, you know, should have declined any, any ruling on such a development? I mean, these are financial issues. Maybe next time we can hear that uh, uh, the court will say the central bank should lower the interest rates. <laughs> I'm telling you, it's not, it, it won't be a strange one with the way things are going. What are your thoughts on this? No, the truth is that, it, of course, you know that judiciary is always there uh, to welcome issues, to settle issues, and to adjudicate on issues. Any issue that is taken to court, no matter how foolish people might think it is, the court will definitely adjudicate on it and take a position. And that is why we have what we call case made laws. Because any judgment given by a court of competent judicial becomes law until that judgment is set aside. So as far as I'm concerned, they have made the wise man who, on his own, taking that decision as a judgment of God. So if anybody or any party or any group of people are not satisfied with the son of the of the judgment, they can they can step further to appeal. As far as I'm concerned, that is the decision of the court as it is now. And they remember that every individual once you are in Nigeria, or every party, an association, an association, once an association is registered, it becomes a legal personality, or sorry, a legal personality, so it can sue and be sued. So that is the way I'm looking at it, and from that angle I'm looking at it. And the court has given its value for one reason or the other. So I think the best thing anyone can do who feels like this is to go to the court of appeal to challenge it. Hmm. So, so just, just to be sure, if someone goes to the court tomorrow and you and says, oh, court, please um, um, restrain the CBN from lowering the interest rate or order them 
to lower the interest rate to maybe uh, uh, seven percent, you you still say the same thing that uh, the court in this yeah, wisdom, because, you know. Because there are people that will want the interest rate to either be high or low, based on interest. So the court will look at this side by side and look at it holistically to decide which one will be for the benefit of the masses. But remember that most times judgments are given for, you know, stability in the society. So okay. there are so many reasons why a judgment can be given. All right, Justice, I, I like us to look at, you know, this part of the concerns of these political parties. They say that, uh, I mean, if this policy is implement, implemented to uh, the latter, it would ensure the credibility of the 2023 elections. As a matter of fact, they say that uh, this policy is... Uh, without shifting the deadline of 10th February, uh, President Mohamed Buhari would have actually taken a huge step closer to fulfilling his promise to the world that the 2023 general elections will be credible, free, and fair. So in, uh, I'd like to ask you, do you think that this policy in any way will aid free, fair, and credible elections? Well, well, well let me tell you the truth, and let me say this as it is simply that You see, why these political parties went to court is because they may have initiated that one or two other political parties may want to rush to court to compel the CBN to extend the deadline. That is why you see this thing coming. For me personally, I love what is happening so far. Because you see, this issue or what we are going through now will help us in Nigeria to less the level of monetizing policies in Nigeria. One of the major problems we find, the major problem we have in Nigeria today is because we have monetized politics. It is all about money. It is all about the highest bidder. And if there is no money to share anywhere, people will come out in mass and vote their, their conscience and vote the right people. Let me tell you, you don't know the power of money. Especially in a society where hunger is almost killing everybody. And these politicians, they know what they are doing. They will hold all this money until when election is coming, they will go and bring it out. And these are money that belongs to the whole masses, me and you. Now let me ask you a question and let me say this for the very for all Nigerians to know. All most of these people that are contesting election today, they make their money from the government. They, most of them, they make their money from the government. It's just very few of them. It's just very few of them. Check their history, check their dissidents. They make their money from the government. What it means is that it is our money that they, they have bought and they want to bring it out and give it to us. You can imagine where somebody will come out and be, and be saying that he's richer than a, 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 a state. Justice, before before we go, um, you've talked a very important point, and uh, I, I love the way you've called. Um, will come out and be proud. <laughs> ju ju justice, uh, yeah, Justice Webb, well, I love the way you've gone, um, um, uh, 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 Leonard Council, I love the way you've gone. You've talked about the weaponization of money in elections in Nigeria, weaponization of, uh, should I say, utilization of poverty as a tool, okay, to, to, to win elections. Uh, you've said that if if they don't, you know, uh, the CBN extends this deadline, there is a higher propensity for politicians and their proxies, all right, to 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 buy votes. You're talking about vote buying, vote buying. You talked about hunger. Yeah. You talked about poverty, starvation, and all that, and people will be. But but we had some week a governor of River State said something, which is quite interesting to this conversation. Yes, some week said that 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 this policy does not affect him as a person. He said it does not affect the politicians, that they have already sorted themselves out, that he already has his money. He didn't as well use the money for, by the way. But he says he already has his money. <laughs> you know, I know he was implicating himself. He says they have already gotten their money. This election, they're prepared already. So what the central bank is, not, is doing is not going to affect them. Now, if people, we live in a country where people cannot, very quickly, cannot get money, Naira, new Naira, and the politicians who we, we cases already have prepared, pop up at these elections with new Naira, wouldn't they be tempted to take it and vote for these, uh, these, these, these politicians who are buying their votes? If the, the truth here is that Uike is not saying the truth. 
He's not saying the truth. He's not saying the obvious part. You see, these are who I have to talk to people and to see people as far as I'm concerned. You know, you see, the only thing I feel is that um, the banks or CBN would have made it in a way that money will be available for people, for the masses, to do their petty trading and go about their business on daily basis. Like this issue of you may not be able to withdraw uh, or deposit more than 100,000 in a day, then more than 500,000 in a week, either to withdraw or to deposit. Fine, for me, well and fine, it's good, I like it so much. But let it be available for the people, for the masses. It will be very, very difficult for the politicians, because the politicians, they go with billions of Naira. And so, where if you have the old Naira note in billions, when you take it to the bank, the bank will not accept it from you because EFCC will come after you. Where did you get the money from? Where have you been keeping the money? So we can not say any truth. It's affecting the politicians. There are no two ways about it. All right. Justice Uebu, uh, human rights advocate, joining us uh, via Zoom from Abuja. Thank you very much for your time. Uh, always a thrill having you, and uh, we look forward to having you again. My pleasure. All right. All right. We still have more programs, uh, discussions ahead. Uh, Mercy? Yeah, definitely. When we take a break, we'll be looking at a very sensitive issue. I mean, that has plagued our society over the years, and it's the issue of uh, circumcision. That's how we know it. Take a break. We'll be right back. Stay with us.